Well, my little art friends, welcome back. You've come back for another video tutorial, and today's tutorial is going to be a tricky one, probably the trickiest one we do. That's okay. We're going to create this creepy frog tongue. All right, that's what we're going to do. So you know already that what you're going to need to do is get a couple of images. So if you go to Artist South B, you'll see the frog image and the tongue image. Please go and click on those and download them into your download folder and you'll see they look similar because the frog tongue has the frog next to it but I need them both and you need them both to do this tutorial so once you did that you're gonna go over you're gonna open up the Photoshop and when the Photoshop is open uh, we're gonna start here we go I'm going to open and the first image I am going to seek in my download folder is the frog image. So I'm going to double click on that and wait for it to open and voila. Now as you know I don't like to work with this whole area so I'm going to click hold my mouse and drag it down so I can just work with the image the way I like to work with the image. There it is. Now what we want to do with this image is get this frog. We're going to work with this frog and make it part of that tongue but this tongue uh, isn't that high of a quality that's why I have the other tongue so all we want from this image is this frog so all we need to do is crop out all the rest of the stuff we don't need luckily there is a crop tool it is right here and by getting the crop tool you can start at the top let's say left hand corner and you can click the mouse hold it down and then you can drag and when you get to the bottom right hand corner you can release the mouse and you can see that the area is showing you what is going to be cropped. Now you can adjust it if you need to. I can adjust this box up and down, but I did such a great job doing that that I like where it is. And since I like where it is, I'm gonna hit enter on the keyboard. And now I have my frog sitting there all by his alone, ready to work with. All right, so he's gonna sit right here. And while he does, I'm gonna go up to file I'm going to go to open and I'm going to get my other image that I want to work with today, which is the mouth image, mouth.jpg. And we're going to get the mouth. And again, as you remember from the other tutorial, Photoshop has this habit of putting them together so you can toggle back and forth. Hey, if you like to work that way, that's up to you. I don't. So I'm going to click on the mouth image. I'm going to drag it over here so I can see both images at the same time. Bring that up a little bit. Good. All right. Now, Really what we want to do is we want to get that frog and we want to put that frog on the mouth image because uh, we're going to use that sort of as a template to build a tongue to make it look like a frog. So how do we get that frog on there? Well, there are a couple of ways we can do it. Um, really, one of the easiest ways is you probably can just uh, select, you could hit select all, control A, and that would select everything. You could hit control C on the keyboard, and that would cut it. You could go to your mouth image and hit control V for victory and uh, your frog will be there. That's a good way to do it. So that's what we're going to do. Now it's there. What are we going to do? Well, first thing is I do not like all that white space there. That is just not working for me. I've got to get rid of that white space around it. I just want the frog. So how am I going to get rid of it? Well, there's an eraser tool. And I guess technically you could use the eraser tool and you could come erase it. Uh, that would take a little bit of time. So let's not do that. Um, but a better way would be to select it uh, using one of the quick selection tools. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to click on that. And uh, the magic wand tool right here uh, will allow me to select um, pixels of a certain color all at once. So if I came over here and I clicked on, let's say, Mr. Frog, you can see it selected some of that frog. Unfortunately, because the frog has so many colors in it, it can't get all of it. So that's not really going to work. Control D for deselect. However, if I click on the white, look at that. It selects all the white, but it doesn't select the frog. And that's really what I want to get. So there you go. I've got it selected. Now all I got to do is get rid of it. On the keyboard, there is a backspace button and you just click it and the white goes away. Magically, it's deleted. Control D for deselect. 
gets rid of the selection, and now I've got my frog. Now you notice I go back and get my move tool. I always talked about that in the last tutorial. Because I got my move tool, I want to move the frog. He's on his own layer, which is good, but he's not where I want him. He's not on the tongue. So basically, I'm just going to grab him and move him. But one of the challenges is I don't know where the tongue is because I can't see it. It's crazy. Where's the tongue? Oh, I don't know if I'm putting the frog on it or not. I'd never be able to do this right. Is that right? I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my layers palette. And being that I'm on my frog layer one, there's a little opacity and it is at 100%. Well, that means uh, you can't see through it. But if you lower the opacity, you can actually make the little frog see-through. Matter of fact, you can make him invisible, but I don't want him invisible. I want to see him. So I'm going to make him about halfway. Now look, I can see the tongue and where it is. I can see Mr. Frog and where he is. And now if I move my frog, I can align him so he is over that tongue and I can see exactly how that curve's coming down and it's kind of curving real nice with that tongue. That's great. But you know what? It's not perfect. It's kind of really a little too, it's like it's going to like lick his nose if that was his tongue. So that might be a little too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control T on the keyboard. And if you remember, Control T was our transfer tool, a transform tool, excuse me, which you can also get here, Control T, under the edit menu. But I like to use shortcuts, so Control T is great. And you remember the little rotate thing. This is where it's going to rotate. That's the axis. So if I go outside the box and I click and I just raise it up a little bit or I lower it a little bit, I can get him to rotate a little bit. And then if I click him, I can, now because I can see through him, I'm trying to get this tongue to line up right here and line up right with that little froggy so it looks real natural uh, like it's just supposed to be that way. And I'm pretty happy with that right there. So I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard. You play around with it, get it the way you like it. All right, good. I'm going to go bump up my opacity again, just for now, so I can see the whole frog. All right, we need to make that frog look like a tongue, not look like a frog. And there's a great little tool called the Clone Stamp Tool. And what the Clone Stamp Tool does is, and I think I'll demonstrate, I'll just demonstrate on this frog right here is if you set an area, let's say his eyeball is where I want to set the area. I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute. I'm just going to do it right now. Then I move over to where I want to go. I can actually paint wherever the first area was and create a new area. So what I'm going to do on this image is get that tongue and paint it on top of that frog. But there is a challenge. I'm going to minimize this. This is not in the way. We don't need that anymore. There is a challenge. Uh, if I do that, um, it's going to actually paint everywhere. It's not just going to paint where the frog is. So I want to select that frog and only paint inside that frog. So again, I'm going to go back to my magic wand tool. And again, I can't select the frog because he's multiple colors, so that's not going to work. So Control-D. However, if I click outside the frog, I can select everything around the frog. Wow, look at that. Everything around it is totally selected. But the frog's not selected, and I want the frog selected. So what I've got to do is I've got to inverse that selection. Yeah, silly me. I almost forgot where it was. Okay, it's under select. Select. If you click select on the menu up the top and you click inverse, you will notice that the frog is now selected. We don't have that selection box around here. Now the frog is selected, that's great, because I only want to work with inside that frog. Now, actually, I'm going to get rid of that frog, because I don't even need the frog. So I'm going to hit backspace on my keyboard. Bye, frog. Oh, he's gone. But the selection's still there, and that's cool, because I'm going to work inside that selection. Now, let's get started with that clone stamp tool. This is the tricky part. This right here is the clone stamp tool, and I'm just going to click on it, and I'm going to come over here. Now, you can see it's a brush. Oh, it's a rather small brush right there. So I can raise the size of that brush, or I can change anything about that brush with our attributes over the top. So right here is the size of the brush. And I'm going to go just a little bigger. I don't even know how big I want to make it. Uh, that's pretty good, 47. Probably big enough um, as I'm painting in there. Now you can still see it's holding over that frog image from before. So once I've got my brush size, I want to reset it so it's doing the tongue. 
So I'm going to click on my background layer because they want to work on my background layer. I'm going to come to the tongue. Here's how the clone stamp tool works. On the keyboard, the Alt tab, I hold it down. Watch what happens when I press it. Here we go. Click. It changes it to like a little like bullseye target to show you where you're going to be selecting from. And I can select anywhere inside this tongue to start. Now, I just move my mouse around to decide where I'm going to start. I'm just going to start right here in the middle. And to set it, I'm still holding down the Alt tab. I click with the mouse. Then I let go of the Alt tab. Now, here's the tricky part. If I paint right now, and you can see I can paint that tongue, it's going to paint on that background image. And I don't want to paint on the background layer. I want to paint on layer one. So I'm going to click on layer one. And now I can start painting. And you can see how it's picking up the tongue and putting it in there. Now, it gets a little tricky because, uh, look, I picked up some teeth, right? So that's not good. I only want tongue. So what do I do? What I do is I have to go back to my background layer, and I've got to reset. Hold down the Alt tab, select on the tongue, click with the mouse, let go of the Alt tab, go back to layer one, this is why it's tricky, and now I can paint some more tongue. So once I go around and I'm painting on the tongue, now you can see I'm getting off to the cheek. And I don't want to paint cheek. That's not tongue. I got to go back. That's why it's tricky. Hold the Alt tab. I'm going to click. And I'm going to come back and paint in some tongue. Oh, gosh, see that? I made the mistake because I forgot to go back to layer one. Control-Z, get rid of that. Go back to layer one. Now let's paint it. All right, this is looking good. I got to get his little toes. Oh, I don't like that lip. Control Z. Back to the background layer. It's going to take you a little while to do it. It's not going to happen automatically. That's okay. Take your time. Do it right. Go back, set it. Go back, paint it. Um, I'm not worried about this back foot because I'm going to reset anyway. When you're done, and take your time, but when you're done, you think you're done, look at it, be like, yeah, that looks good, Sans, I'm liking this tongue. Uh, you can go back to the Move tool, and you can hit Control-D on the keyboard to deselect. So I'm going to turn off my background layer just to show you what we've got. That's what we've got on layer one. Okay, and there's, without the frog, there's the tongue. Now, it's looking good. It's looking pretty good, but I'm not really happy with that foot there. I don't want that foot there. I just like the other feet. So I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab an eraser tool. Eraser tool uh, has a couple of different ways, modes you can work with, but it's in the brush mode, which is nice. It's kind of a small brush. It's got a little bit of a, of a feather to it, which I like. So I'm okay with this default. I'm on that layer one, and I'm just going to come in here, and I'm just going to kind of delete real slow. And I'm just going to kind of try to round it. So it kind of looks like that tongue is just going right up there. Um, and I don't think I need to do much there either. Okay, I'm good. Back to the move tool. I deleted it. Now it's looking like a tongue. Now it's looking like a frog tongue. But it still looks kind of flat. It's very flat. Like there's no, you know, if you had your tongue and you were sticking out of your mouth, it wouldn't be right up against your face like that. There'd be like a little shadow. Luckily, if you go to layer, you can go to layer style and you can do what's called a drop shadow. And by selecting the drop shadow, it's going to open up a little window. There it is. And on my drop shadow, um, you don't really see it because it's not that big. See the distance? It's only one pixel. So it's only going for one pixel. So let's bigify that. Now you can see the drop shadow. Oh, that's a little too far. So let's say I want a little drop shadow yeah, it's not going to be that big of a shadow. Let's just do that for now. Now, also, that's kind of kind of harsh. You can spread it, which is going to make it oops, wait in the size, which is going to soften it. Yeah, size works better. Forget spread. I take that back. Um, size works better. So if I want to make it look really close, a close shadow is going to be a lot sharper, but a farther away shadow is going to be softer. So I just want like just a little bit of blur to it. So like maybe what we got there eight. Eight looks good. Um, the other thing is the angle of the shadow, the direction the light's coming from. You can see this little angle tool. That shows you the direction of the light. You can actually go and you can swivel this guy around, and you can see how the angle changes. So depending on where you want the angle to come from. 
Now, if I do the angle from, I'm going to make the um, I'm going to make the opacity on this really dark, so you can see it really good. It's a much darker shadow. Uh, if the angle is up like that, you see how it's causing the shadow there because the light's coming from the top and coming down. So it's causing this weird shadow, which makes our tongue frog look like it's cut in half. So that angle is not going to work. Probably the angle all the way around the other side is going to work a little better because it's going to look like the light's coming up from the bottom and it's not cutting that tongue off. Now I made that opacity really dark. It looks a little ridiculous. So I'm going to bring it back down and just try to get something a little more natural. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to hit OK. Now we're getting there. Now we're almost done. So two more tools, and then you are done. Uh, right here on the toolbar is a couple of tools, the dodge tool, the burn tool, and the sponge. The dodge tool lightens a section using a brush. That brush is a little big. I could smallify it if I want. But overall, it's not too bad. When I click here, and I click with the mouse, and I drag, can you see how it's lightening? I'm going to over-exaggerate it. I'm going to really lighten it. You see how it's really lighting it? That like makes it like there's a highlight there. I might have overdone it, but that's okay. Then I can come and I can use the burn tool and I can darken it. So let's say I have a light coming down. It's getting a little glare there. And right here, I want to go a little darker. Like, oh yeah, it's darker on that side. And I'm overdoing it here too, but just to give you the idea how it works and understand it. So by lightening and darkening it, you could get a nice little um, highlight going. Mine looks really bad. I overdid it, but that's all right. It's the point to show you how it works. When you're done, your frog tongue is done. And you're going to save it. So I'm just going to go to File, Save As. Remember from the other tutorial, we can save it as a Photoshop document. So we can always come back and edit these layers if we want. Uh, but I want to save this as frog tongue. And I want to save it as a JPEG. Because I want to post it to... Seesaw, and I want to post it to Face Snapbook and to Twittergram. So a nice frog tongue JPEG. I'm going to save that. And again, I'm always happy with my JPEG options, 12 maximum. That's not a very big image. So yay, hit OK, and we're done. Now remember, this is still a Photoshop document. So when you go to close it, it's going to ask you, do you want to save it? And you don't need to save it because we're done. So that's it. Go make a frog tongue. Enjoy it, and we'll see you on the next exciting video tutorial.